Being 6.30 plus, we're going to start the hearings tonight. I am Vice Chairman, Acting Chairman, Chairperson. We have the Conservation Commission due to uh, what has happened. We'll start with a request for Certificate of Compliance, 170-225, 46 Rocky Hill Road, Garage Edition. Okay, so um, I, men I mentioned that at a previous meeting, um, that an addition was put on and originally the um, person was told to plant some blueberry bushes in the back to sort of delineate um, part of the uh, riverfront area. The lawn actually extends into the 100 foot of the riverfront area and 35 foot buffer, but it was already there. So we, um, we didn't try to change that, but um, anyway, so the blueberry bushes were planted, but they died. So I went back out and I talked to them. I said, look, what we really want is a line, um, uh, no more mowing beyond this line. You can keep the lawn that you have just for future owners. We don't want them getting any more into the 35-foot buffer and into the 100-foot riverfront. So they did, um, I talked to the new owners and they had some iron bars, some sort of trident-shaped things actually. As Mm -hmm. And they put five of them across the property, um, and you can see one from the other. Mm -hmm. and I, and yeah, so I told them that's in fine. So that's the last thing that was needed for the um, certificate of compliance. So okay. it should be okay to go. So they have a, 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 a permanent marking? Yes, yeah, and I'm going to include a copy of the map that shows the Good. one. Good, thank you. So do we have a motion? On the certificate? I move that we accept that we sign up, whatever. So move. <laughs> I'll second it. Open for discussion. No further discussion. Uh, Have a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimous. 4 0. Did Gordon vote? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You vote, well, right, Gordon? Yeah. Oh, okay. You didn't see your sign. You didn't hear a phone <laughs> All right, so you guys can sign that. Thank you. Next is the request for emergency request for emergency certificate for replacement of a failed septic system leach field. G. Pellisier, One Russell Street. That being myself, I have to recuse myself from this. And who will run this? Yes, me. That place. I don't know. Do you want me to temporarily? Is that allowed? I, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, I think a, a member of the commission. Okay. All right. Someone? Who wants to run this one? I don't. <laughs> okay, someone. Okay, Gordon, can you just do it now? I've never done one. So. I'll say, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, you just sit back. So <laughs> just a ask me what the, the, the specifics of the. What are the specifics? Okay. So, <laughs> um, Gary has a, a failed leach field and he needs to have that replaced. Um, he's put together a permit for the Board of Health and I have a set of the plans as well. But um, maybe you can ask the applicant if you have any specific questions about it. What happened? Did you feel failed? 24 years old. Really? Yeah. Do you know why it failed? No. Oh, you, until you dig it out, you won't know what. Well, why we're it replacing it with a new leach field with Title Five sand. Right. It's going to be a bigger leach system field. Okay. The old system is old <coughs> trench system, old school. Not bigger, wider, <coughs> bigger. Yeah. Who's going to do the work? Mike Morowski, estimated. Yeah. Play it. And so, um... What are you doing now for pooping? <laughs> <laughs> no. He comes here. It, it, once a week. <laughs> it does come out of the ground, but it's not completely failed, but it's a failure. Yes, yes. Okay. So, no, it's just as it's going to put a hardship on you and your family and everyone. It will supposed, be. Well, right now, there's only two of us in the house, not a normal right. four-person bedroom. Right. Home, so it's, it's not as stressed as it was last year. Right. COVID. <laughs> oh, yeah. We have family members staying at the house. Are there any more questions? No. I have a motion, except. So we move. Second. Okay, uh, so it was Edwin yeah. and then Steve seconded. Okay. All right. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Just Gary. Okay. <laughs> All right, so this is for the compliance. Hmm? Yeah. Yep. Okay. okay. And this is for the emergency certification. Next one, ratification of emergency certificate for culvert replacement, DPW, Mill Valley Road. Yes. So this one, um, the, thank you, the heavy rains that we got this past weekend, um, uh, one of the culverts sort of collapsed and then blew out on Mill Valley Road over near the sub storage um, unit area. And mm -hmm. uh, so Chris sent me pictures, and um, so I told him that you should ask for an emergency cert in order to do the work because he's working in the stream as well as the bank there. So he did, and um, he supported the pipe that was waiting. In the meanwhile, he's stabilized it with straw and stuff like that. Yeah. We're going to have to do a lot more work on it still. But at any rate, so um, he asked to have it start, have the start date of today. Thank you, and that that should take care. They should be able to get the pipe in time to be able to. Yes. Okay, so um, I was going to I was going to print out pictures, but I did not have time. Um, but at any rate, is they, it a bigger pipe? A bigger pipe? Is it the same size? Same size? Just out of curiosity. I I put down the same size and depth. That's what I understood it was going to be. Okay. Yes. Otherwise, I think it requires more. But right now, it's it's, it's it was really quite a blowout. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Okay, so um, someone make a motion to read a issue this. And, and actually, Gary's already signed it to get it out to him right away, but we need it ratified. Actually, is what we need to ratify, but still do. I'll do it. it. Okay, Gordon. I'll second. Okay, second. And um, discussion? Yeah. No discussion? No, it needs to be fixed. All oh, those approved? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Okay, let's get on to the main event tonight. But we all came here for it. Notice of intent public hearing 170 280 continued. Mass D Department of Transportation seeks to reconstruct and widen sections of Russell Street, Route 9, from Middle Street to North South Maple Street, including bicycle and pedestrian accommodations. And who would like to start off for Mass DOT? I think I can uh, start off. Sam, sure. I just wanted to just make sure that um, the chairman had certified that he watched the previous hearing. Oh, yeah. Yes, I did. I watched it today, actually, just before we came. Perfect. Thank you. Just make sure. Quite a fun. Two hours of show. You missed out on all the fun. Yeah, we're on it, but it is Sam. Yeah. So we, do, uh, we just received all this information. When? Today? Yeah. Final peer review comments today, some of the other stuff in the last two days, all the other maps yesterday. So I just got handed the uh, peer review comments for stormwater. And wetlands. And wetlands. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I guess to start. Yeah, let's start that. Yeah, we were, first of all, thank you very much to BIC Group. Um, our peer reviewers are here tonight, Mr. Matt Byrne and Don Rinaldi. Um, yeah, we're very grateful to receive these final comment letters. Um, and just to give a brief overview, the stormwater one uh, in the summary of findings states, based upon our review of the information submitted above, BSC finds that the project as currently proposed is in general conformance with applicable stormwater management requirements. For a redevelopment project that complies with the Massachusetts stormwater standards to the maximum extent practicable. Uh, also included in that letter were some suggested special conditions which we reviewed. Um, I don't know if we want to get too deep into those at the moment, but generally we were amenable to them with one slight um, one that we want to review with you folks. So basically, 
you, you're looking at the stormwater management one first? From the BSC group? Yep. Yes. So basically, you're in agreement with the recommended special conditions except for one? Uh, yes. So why don't we just go to that one then? Well, sure. Yes. I would like to sort of go over some of the, the larger project things too. I mean, maybe we, 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 just to see what the final designs were since we just got the maps yesterday. I have not had a chance to look at them. And fortunately, the peer reviewers have, but I think we should still look at at least the, the major places where they're reworking things. There are a few places along Route 9 where they're doing a lot of repairs, replacements of pipes and some redirection of stream channels and stuff. And um, I think we should just make sure we know what it is before <coughs> we jump into the final. But has the peer group reviewed that for us? Yes, but in the end, we're responsible for issuing the orders. Uh, <laughs> we would be happy to review some of the areas where changes were made. If you can um, do it in a brief manner, I don't want to spend can, hours yeah. on this. It won't be another two hours. So one other thing, I think, sorry, um, but I'm just thinking that perhaps we should make it clear, um, just in terms of what the legal quorum, that <coughs> while town council still believes that four is the legal quorum, not three, um, we understand that the applicant wishes us to proceed with assuming that three is the legal quorum for being, being able to hold the hearing and to make a decision and issue orders. Is that correct? Correct. We have four members present, so there is a quorum here, and then similar to the project where the chairman had to recuse himself, the vote would be taken by three members. Okay. So we reviewed that with well, our... You understand the ramifications, Council. Yep. Said we that last time. Council as well. He reconfirmed that with us tonight. So if we do close the hearing with conditions, it's subject to appeal, and you understand that? We understand. We reviewed it with our council as well, and he has a slightly different opinion, but we'd like to proceed in the Council concurs with what I said? Yes. Okay. It's on you. I understand, and thank you. Um, Thanks. Yes, so we can, I guess, just to I'll make it one more statement about the peer review, then we can look at some of the areas. Okay. Yep, so the stormwater, uh, Rich just read that one, and we can review the conditions at the end once we review some of the areas along Route 9, and then for the review of the Notice of Intent and the Wetlands in the Summary of Findings section, uh, we were provided with the statement, BSC finds that the project as currently proposed and modified based on comments by the Hadley Conservation Commission and BSC, and with special conditions to be included in an order of conditions, meets the performance standards of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, um, and we reviewed the special conditions that were suggested by the peer reviewer, and once again are amenable to uh, all of those and any additional that perhaps you Janice have um, come up with. So, so, did anybody from your from the DOT take a ride along these nine because of the intense amount of rain we had three days ago? Uh, two days ago, or however long? I, I still can't go out on my field. So, you know, was there any significant changes to the projects that were in the peer group that verified what we wanted you to do? You know, were there anything, did some culverts wash out? Did some uh, ditches yeah. handle yeah. that? Did, 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 did the ditches handle all the water? Um, yeah, and you know, I've, I've been involved personally on the project for, for seven years. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly many storm events. Uh, but we haven't heard directly from the town or from SDFT that there's any capacity issues along that floor. Okay. So. I'm just curious, just, just to make sure, because it, it was fortunate that we had our rain event that we did have. Right. Because it, it, it pointed out where things were amiss. Yeah. Yeah, so it didn't. It didn't a lot of the last month. So. Yes, we did. <laughs> and to speak to that a little further, and thanks to some of the comments provided by BSC, we revisited some structures, adjusted some pipe angles, and also upsized some pipes to help you know, ensure that you know when things are flowing into the system, we don't get back up into. Adjacent. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I think specifically this was one that we had talked about at the site visit was upsizing some of the 12 inch pipe to 15 and we right. yeah. several hundred feet of that uh, Good. just to give it extra capacity if it's ever necessary. Yeah. Right. Right. right, thank you. Bob, did you want to say something? I was just going to say I've been on site multiple times in the rain, including very recently. My purpose during the rain was to wash it 
uh, interesting to see the different flow directions and things like that. Mm -hmm. Everything, mm -hmm. as we expected, expect to make improvements. Everything they seem to make sense. Yeah, our thinking. A grass waterway that I have on my farm was flowing backwards. Yeah, because yeah. it came down so hard, so fast, so quick, and the outlet couldn't handle it, so it backed up. And then we could we could watch the level go up and then go down in a, a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> and Monday we still could not walk on the field. Tuesday we could not walk on the field. It's like walking on a mattress. Yeah, it, yeah, it's truly amazing. And even now, here it is, four days later, five days, four days later. I really there are places I do not want to go <laughs> because I know I'm going to have to call a tow truck to pull me out. So as long as there were issues and you upgraded a lot of the things, that was, that's a good point. Verified what we were trying to tell you folks. Yeah, I think we were confident before that the system had the capacity, and now we're even more confident that we're giving it more than it needs to, to handle events like the one that we just had. And though they're going to be worse. <laughs> they are going to be worse. That's all I can say. So at this point, if we want to just look through some of the locations where um, sure. Epsilon added new flags that were removed by BSC in the field, we can flip through those as briefly as we can. Um, I'm not sure what the preferred method of doing this would be. I don't know either. But perhaps we can just, I mean, it's going to be difficult for it to be seen on the street. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say don't worry about the small wetland changes. Yeah. Only things that, yeah. you know, I meant that um, other design plans have to change. Just go to the big heads. Yeah. yeah. I just put it right here. Okay, I mean, sure. I don't think you're going to want to see this again. Yeah. That's it. 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 So this is where my Yeah, there's no opinion. Yeah, it is. It's 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 
Yeah. 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 Yep. This yeah. is sheet 115. No change on this sheet. Oh, this was the one where you had to modify rock fill and have to put in the silt fence at the base. Yep. Right? And we provided the special provision that says that we'll do that. And I believe that was and also a separate plan, or something. There's a special detail or something you know, on that. Yep. There's okay. a detail for the silt fence. Yeah. Careful placement. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I think. Rob, that's something that we'll be aware of during construction. <laughs> that's good, so it's still fresh. It's still fresh. So this is sheet so this 117. Is 117. This is 303 Russell Street. Oh, 303. Okay. So this is the one where we spent a fair amount of time in the field just looking at looking at the two pipes that the are coming pipes. out that way. So yep. that way. And yeah, we looked at both sides. Okay. And do you have a, a, an enlargement of that at some point? That's so in the special for me. Uh, Can you uh, show us that either when we're through this flipping or? I don't have it with me. It was okay. in the documents that we provided. Yeah. And I didn't have time to, to go through it, so I don't know. But I guess I could talk to the peer reviewers. But we did increase the permanent impact there to reflect the changes that we discussed uh -huh. on the site visit. Um, just to land the water. Just to land the water. Uh -huh. the wetlands. So what what are you doing there? There are two. There's a pipe coming here, another one yep. coming here, and so there's a pipe that outlets, yeah. and then there's another pipe that inlets. It yeah. forms kind of a 90 degree angle. Yeah. So in the current condition, it just kind of swirls around and okay. erodes in that location, putting a wall structure in there to better direct it through the culvert and prevent that you know, erosion. That we're okay. And then on the other side. The other side. Um, um, Sorry, yep. and it comes down here, it comes down here, the vault is here. Okay. So then it goes one? into okay. these and into the next out in the southern outlet. Okay. And then so we had a concern about the discharge coming in too close to the bank that's over near the um the um all that sign. Yeah, but the the the, 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 the board. Yeah. yeah, and so what did you do? I know you can't really see it there, but yep. what did you we do? added uh, uh, bank stabilization uh, here. So that any flows of so that come out of this come out of this side of the culvert yeah. are directed into the existing stream channel. Okay. And this is reinforced so that it won't cause any further erosion of the bank there. Yeah. Exactly. So if I reinforce is that block It's the uh, standard detail that we do in other locations where we have the mud rock fill and it's um, soil over it with plantings. Oh okay. okay. Yeah. So it's uh you know, to provide some well. And what sort of plantings and shrubs? Um, um, but we have the details we show. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, I just did not have time to. I think <laughs> you and Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. okay. And yeah. also, this is a location where we had a wild flags. Okay. And again, that was sheep one. To so continue it a little bit to see for sure where the bank comes yes. in. Yes. And none of these. Structures that you're adding will be back in the yeah. existing place where you're standing, where you're standing. water going through on the field that will not impact. No, not impact. No. Good. No. Yeah. No impact, and like we said, that's why we upsize some of the pipes and inlets to allow mm -hmm. to prevent that back up. Mm -hmm. Wait, any potential for that? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is shelf address well. This is uh three seventeen. Oh, the Chinese school. Oh, okay. All right. And that's where they're doing a major major change in the direction of the flow as well. Well the flow direction is the same. Well, okay. so we're just tying in so it's to provide that natural channel and to tie into the existing so that when the road gets widened here it doesn't just start happening outside of the street outside. We're doing this grading and this stabilization so that you know, your existing outlet point is here, it goes out this way, yeah. then it's going to be here. And if we had left it there, we'd just be dumping out into a non-wet area in the current condition. So by grading it like this and tying back into the stream here, we're just ensuring that you know, we're not going to inundate their front lawn or something and change the whole dynamics of that location. Uh, the improvements that you're doing here will they be able to be maintained relatively easy, easily? Yeah, it'll be similar to the existing condition of what's out there today. What's out there today. It's so well, that's only <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I would assume that it's overgrown because you don't have too much. Yeah. 
Yeah. You make it so uh, make the bags. Correct. Well, you want water to flow. Want water well, to well, yeah, the water will flow. I just want more of the yeah. Yeah. vegetation yeah. in that location. Right. So it's it's rough again on the banks. On the banks. But times with soil times too. So it's so it's not hard scale. And then are you doing um, invasive <coughs> control here too or not? Uh, I think the invasive control is throughout the entire corridor, and it's based on, based on you know what is found in the field, and it's done in accordance with the invasive plant management strategy, which was another one of the special provisions yeah. that we provided. Okay, and so maybe after we through this, you can just briefly explain explain that. Sure. sure. Sheet one nineteen. One nineteen changes. No changes. She wants 20, no changes. Just temporary impacts of the these things over here? Permanent and temporary. And temporary. But these are on the original plan. Yeah. Yeah. This hasn't changed since the first submission. First submission. And then the pit plan is sheet 121. This is, there's a lot going on here, but I will say the only thing that's changed is that some additional bank flags were added to better delineate the channel as existing. And one, one very small sliver of what was added mm -hmm. there. So this is four seasons, right? So mm -hmm. Over there somewhere, and you're creating a western wetland restoration area back here, and correcting or revising or whatever the, the way that the water is falling across. Yep, it's still outletting. It's just yeah. a little bit further down. We put the stabilization there again to protect this replication area. Um, and yeah, this replication is actually on the far side of the stream, so it's across the stream from four seasons. Is this the ditch being cleaning? Not that we're aware of. Where is it? It's uh, it, it, behind four seasons. Yeah, it comes out here and it goes that way and it goes back under. Right, that was one of the ones you said. Yeah. We use in out. Yeah, we use in out. On one side of Route 9 is a ditch and the other side is a... Intermittent stream. Intermittent stream. Okay. This side is perennial, though, I believe. Yeah, no, or, yeah. yeah it's something like that. I think we were printed, we came out by the uh, back of the window place. Mm -hmm. Yes, couldn't, that's right. You couldn't expand the driveway because that yeah. was considered a perennial there, yep. where it's intermittent on this side of the yep. so, it, so you really can't clean that out, right? Being a perennial stream? I would have to go with the permanent. Yeah. I mean, probably could if we needed it. But that runs parallel to these parking lots. Parking lot, yeah. Mm -hmm. w. Okay. And we quantify those as permanent impacts and have the lack of area shown. Okay. And then the, the other two wetland replication areas are up here. Yep. And where's the bus station in relation to this? Um, is it kind of between them? It's, good. Let's see, it's right over here, okay? This is where the stream comes through. Mm -hmm. And the bus station's right next to it. I mean, it won't be any more, I guess, but. Yeah, I don't know. Just to the east of. Where that this is the existing bus stop right here. Oh, okay. okay. So, could, the question is, are they going to have a bus stop into the plan? Have they moved over? Uh, it's going to be pushed down a little bit further. So, like the north, there's going to be one on either side of the north of South Main Street. Oh, the it's called section. crossing section. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, that was my rapid summary of the changes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And we do have two full size sets of Okay. Good. It would have been nice that we could go, but well, <laughs> oh. yeah, um, yeah that's, uh, you know, and again, I'm just going to reiterate, you're coming before the relatively important committee, and you're telling us to hurry up because we have to go to bed. And don't do that. Again. Please don't. Please don't. There's never the intention to make it sound. <laughs> <laughs> There's no so, room I left them to come up. We built. We've already done this end. We're doing that end. Yeah, I know. But this. And you know, these, as far as the plans go, you know, we, everybody uh, has been working pretty frantically. Yeah, I know yeah. you have, and, yeah. and these guys have to. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. and we have a fraction board now, so it's around. tough. Yeah. Yeah. Now all the all the stoplights and street lights are, or all the all the intersections are going to be timed. You're going to coordinate them from yeah. you get off the bridge to the uh, entrance of Amherst. What the university drive? I'm not a traffic engineer. I can't speak too in depth about that, but I know that we've done extensive, you know, research on timings and, and yeah. When an function. ambulance goes by, it's going to screw up the lights. We know that, but it's only going to screw it up for a couple of cycles. Right. Then it's going to go back to normal. 
So what, what, what needs to be done, don't just time the lights on the section of the road that you were fixing. Look at the older sections to make sure that everything is flows smoothly. And there's been some projects that have already happened actually recently, uh, tra uh, traffic signal priority throughout the full corridor. I mean, these improvements are gonna even further those, those, those uh, modifications. So uh, yeah, and all the signals gonna be brand new. Good. Be optimized. Yeah. So, Good, I hope we could, you got uh, further down after this section is rebuilt, you got the intersection with Rule 116. You got the intersection right. with University Drive. You got right out here on, on uh, Middle Street. You know, yeah. you can't just do those over there without a right. fixing these too, because yeah. yeah. you, you, they need adjustments. They need tweaking. And I just hope that that's part in, in part of the plan. That is part of the plan. Yeah, and, and I know. Maybe, what you were saying, John, there are jobs, and I can't speak to exactly what has been done and what is planned, but where even if the road's not being fully redone, they'll do signalization upgrades. So Good. Uh, just do that, you know, okay. Good. I hope so. Okay. Sorry. No. On to the next comment. Yeah. Okay. So, um, with the, uh, the 452 page document that has the figures in it that I haven't been able to look at, um, are you able to get us a paper copy of that? Is that sure. sort of a bug? I don't, I don't have a color copier. And I thought we had already mailed a paper copy to the town offices, but we can provide another one. I didn't one. see one. Okay. But a big one? No. Yeah. I haven't gotten any yet. Uh, I've just been looking on the computer trying to go through stuff, and it's just been difficult. Okay. Yeah, so, um, so let's see. So one thing that um, I mentioned to, to Sam as I was looking over the order of conditions to see what sort of things I'm going to need is there have been some revisions to the impacts, temporary and permanent impacts of wetlands, and I need to have that information. So yeah. you have a table, but you said it's in that document. You document. didn't bring the document. Well, I bring a paper copy. A copy. I'm sorry. No, I didn't. <laughs> um, but I can send you the full table. Yes, but nobody here has. I, unfortunately, I just don't have it with You don't have access to the internet here that you could no, I try yeah. I've got the, that document up. You do? Do you happen to know what page that yeah. table is on? Yeah, it's on the pages. Yeah, <laughs> I think. I think it's figure seven, seven eight, eight, or nine, something like that. What's that? Oh, here it is. Oh, yeah. I need to, it's one of the basic things I have to fill out on this, and I would like to know it. Also, I think yeah. the only thing is this one is for the specific areas that change. Oh, uh, not for everything. For the entire corridor, but that's okay. the number that I have. That I so I guess one of the questions I have then is, are you exceeding any of the categories for the 5,000 square foot? We're still below. You're still below that? Yep. Okay. And again, I'll send you. Okay. You're on camera, so we got you saying it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, Okay, yeah, and then we would just like all of the, the totals on that. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, one of the other things that I know was asked during the, the, the original peer review, um, and I think during one of our hearings, was um, the um, different locations of riverfront um, areas and the restorations, and I, and I did see some stuff from Matt circling some of the
Well, what is that? I, I mean, John, you want to? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely out of the realm of what this is about. We had, I had discussed with Matt about see where that ended up. I know we've been talking about this for seven years. I know, for years. Seven years ago. And I've been informed that from Master 2 that there was a meeting with BCR and stakeholders in the snow group. Well, from my opinion, I'm sure. Oh, uh, and MassDMT passed on documentation to ECR. Uh, it's a ECR permit. All right. Uh, okay. And MassDMT, they have these type of hand over the air. Uh, well, they've had, crossing yeah. that See, they, they've had so many people that supported this. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. State yeah. reps, the yeah. town has, everybody supporting this. And there's somebody from the ECR that says no. Yeah, no, ECR is really good. Now, you guys, now I just ask you a question. Is this going to be true or not that we can put up stop signs like we have been since the 70s and still cross them? Well, Masco, you can have that stop signs. No, we are. We do. We are. That would be a plan. It's what we've been doing. You know, is it still going to continue? We'll do that. That would be a permit through Masco, which I don't think that would work. You know, but that's, again, that's not something. So you just shut off the street. We haven't done anything. Well, you said that you're going to get a permit from DOT and you're not going to get one, so that means we can't go vote. So you just shut up. Well, that's the, the, the route is through DCR. That's what Massachusetts informs us. They provide everything to DCR. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what do you mean the route is through DCR? For permits across. You guys, you, you're DOT. That's your problem. So we're not DOT. We're not. Well. But, uh, but uh, the DOT and DCR are two different I know that. I know. But we're talking about your road, the OT road. For now, we're just going to cross it. Like the other one. Like the other one. That's what he's doing, right? <laughs> All right, whatever. It's been happening since the 70s. You know, I grew up in this town. I know that if you had another crossing, probably further down. Yeah. Things change. Okay. Um, see. So one other thing um, in the uh, operation that is taking this plan, you just said that uh, you have to conduct inspection maintenance in accordance with the guidelines contained herein. I didn't see, you know, literally herein on this five-page plan. Or maybe it was on that. But just, yeah. Just so that the inspections are annually for the patch basins. And, and after snow melt? Yeah, so I actually, that was one of the things yeah. in the special conditions we wanted to discuss oh, was okay. the um, catch basin question. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, so I can actually. Okay, so why don't we do that? Yeah. Okay. So, so the recommended special condition regarding the catch basin reporting was both the applicant or its representative shall annually submit a report documenting the inspection of all the catch basins, as well as any other maintenance or repair work performed on the project stormwater management system. Uh, so we spoke with District 2 maintenance as well as the stormwater team and ASCOT uh, because you know here is the representative who really committed to anything that they can't deliver on. Um, so we've said if we could alter that slightly to the Upon request, the applicant or its representative can provide access to MassDOT's asset management system, which is used to track maintenance activity. MassDOT's overall approach is to perform maintenance at an interval that maintains the functionality of the catch basin, e.g. sump is less than 50% full. Uh, catch basin inspections and sediment removal will generally occur simultaneously. And I can provide that to you later. So what do you think? Sorry. I, I mean, uh, so so I, a few higher. Good evening, Dominic Rinaldi with the BSC Group. Um, I mean, ultimately, it, it, it's up to the town um, as to how you, the, the intent behind my original one was thinking more something that the, the commission and the town can basically hand out, not thinking of a detailed report. It's basically a, a printout of, you know, annually, yes, they inspected many catch basins there are. I don't even know that you need to list them all, but yes, they were all inspected on such and such a day, cleaned out on such and such a day. 
Um, something as simple as that. Um, I mean, MassDOT does have their procedures and their protocols and their systems. Um, so it sounded like... It's a... It's yeah, a it's a, yeah, so I was going to say, it sounded like the intent was that MassDOT would be willing to give the town a login or, or whatever, yeah, whatever it may be exactly that they can go in. Uh, so it's up to... It really is that on that one. It really is up to you all in the town as to how you'd like to do that. That is is more of a you can you have to get the information, but you could get it whenever you wanted it, as opposed to having the information delivered to you, but only having the information delivered to you. In okay, was that the, the second post construction? Yes, um, yes, second post construction. Like I said, I can provide this to you. I mean, it, it, either way, it sounds like they're amenable to getting you all the information on yes. the maintenance and, okay. and of, of the drainage system. It's just a function of it's either hand delivered in a paper copy that you put somewhere once a year, or you have, you, the town, and I would assume that that would sort of DPW. be open up to DPW or what have you, would be able to get it whenever they felt like it. I mean, that, correct me if I'm wrong, that's what no, I mean. Yeah, no, sorry. Yeah. So yeah. No. Essentially, you would be given access to this database that they use to track all the maintenance activities. You could then, like you said, access it right. whenever you need it, and it would also probably have more information about other structures you know, right. within the town boundaries as opposed to just getting the pay. Yeah. yeah. Right. We cleaned through nine last week. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I would think that would be helpful for the DPW. Yeah, I mean, and, yeah. like I said, it's, I, I don't. I don't want to speak for DPW, so I, but it sounds like a perfectly fine way yeah, to do it okay. from my standpoint. They also, I mean, we talked about this as well, is, you know, during construction, all the structures over time are going to be you know, right. inspected, inspected weekly at least. And, yeah. you know, if they identify certain ones that seem to be filling up more frequently than others or filling up, you know, at all, you know, they can do um, corrective measures and try to trace back why exactly they're seeing that. Um, so, you know, the next four years when this is under construction, those are going to be uh, under the microscope. This is a four year project? I believe so. Four oh, years so for construction? Yeah, so yeah. About, at least. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Start and finish? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Of construction, yeah. That doesn't surprise me. No, I didn't. Yeah. It's a, yeah. It's a long yeah, yeah. section of yeah. way, and they can Are only. Are you going to be doing it in phases? Or? Uh, yes, yeah, so yeah. mostly it's. I mean, we're not really. So a lot of the work is, you know, bulk of the work is the shared use path and off, off of the road, but certainly the slug drain is uh, water and sewer that the town is taking on. That's not for the whole stretch, but it's made right. here. It's mm -hmm. in, is yeah. this also total death reconstruction too? Uh, no, it is uh, mostly mill and overlay, and there are some sections of full, but mostly mill and so. I think, full depth, I think it was full depth when you did that toward the bridge, correct? Uh, I don't recall what they did that one, but we didn't look on that. That was 20 years ago, wasn't it? Yeah. But no, it, it is mostly uh, some mill and gas. It was what? Full depth. Oh, yeah. 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 I've never seen that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you but that wasn't four years, years though. <coughs> which segments exactly are full depth? I mean, we don't have no, I just didn't know. Since you know where all the bus stops are. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And so you have a, a revised suggestion. Yeah, I'll write yeah. it out for you. So uh, try to tear my uh, So basically, when it comes to the stormwater management, you're in agreement with all the conditions presented by our peer group, with the exception of the second post construction condition that is going to be rewritten. Yeah, and as Tom said, it's still the intent is to provide you with the info. It's just instead of a written report, you know, it's different yeah. wording. So I was going to be exactly, yeah. but we are in agreement that we want to give you that information. So I think we're are we all set with stormwater management? Yes. I guess so. Okay. So. Yes. Okay. And how about the um, the other one? Um, no. Matt, do you want to give a, a little rundown on special conditions for for that? Sure, um, Matt Byrne with the SC Group, um, and you know the way I went through 
uh, sort of relied on some other uh, DOT projects that we've been involved with, uh, providing special conditions for permitting. Uh, so kind of pulled a number of, of suggestions for you from projects we've had involvement with. Um, a lot of them, you know, sort of revolve around good construction technique and practices. Uh, so in, in a lot of respects, hopefully many of them wouldn't even be necessary. Um, but I think probably what you want to most focus on is having a, a, identifying a wetland specialist for the replication work. Yes. And that, that you, you did have a well done uh, specification for yeah. how that should go. It was very detailed. I saw that up when I was flipping through. I read yeah, and that's standard yeah. to every DOT. So yeah, I okay. think there's a list of even pre-qualifieds. Yeah. It's not just, you know, anyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so if you have that special condition that references that, yes. um, you know, that will give you a, a pretty strong uh, did position. You, you didn't do maybe what I'll end up asking for is if um, those, those are like different specs that are going to go into the contract. So how do you cite them? Is there is it numbers. spec number 22 or 300 yeah, or whatever actually, sort of thing? Yeah, I think Matt did do a bit of that in here. I did. Yeah. Um, if you look at the find it. Well, well replication, replication and restoration. Oh, yes, yeah. item 755. Yeah. So okay. Okay, and what about the compliance monitor, the one above it? I didn't see a citation for that. Yeah, and that was one I don't know if that's standard, if you have an additional compliance monitor for the whole project. Uh, I didn't see that in the, in the specifications, but in, in a 450 page document, it might have been tucked in there. Um, but I think that might be good for the commission to have a person who uh, has a, a broader view of the um, uh, evaluation of erosion control over the course of the project and, uh, and has some authority to act on behalf of the commission. We, usually, we require that for any commercial project, anything that's yeah. just not a homeowner's project. Yeah. Because I can't, the, a, and the other commissioners aren't going to be able to get out and see after. I mean, right now, sometimes I still go out after heavy rain. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it, it's nice on this size project that's going to be going on for years and make it difficult access at times to be able to actually see what's going on. Um, that we do want um, a, a monitor, whether it's erosion and sediment control or more generally compliance um, that we can depend on as um, representing our, our concerns. Yeah, I think um, that work is generally included in the items that we have in the contract. I don't know if it's specifically worded as a compliance monitor. I was gonna, Rob, do you know if, I know you're present as, you know, environmental engineer, but is there a specific person we have that's, you know, kind of fulfilling that compliance monitoring role? Yeah, what we do is we have, there's layers of uh, uh, monitoring, all done by professionals, overseen by myself, which I've been doing it for over 30 years. Uh -huh. uh, we have the environmental uh, monitor, which can be the same person or the same company as what the replication monitor with a very strict requirements. We also have on conference on call consultants that we use. So there's layers of, of oversight of that. So there's always someone to answer to. If you copy me on any request, call me on any, any request, I immediately respond back to you. And, or it would be one of the professionals that meet all those requirements. So we can have a reputation monitor, environmental monitor, myself, district environmental engineer, all doing those those tasks either together or in tandem. You know, uh, it's something we've done time after time after time. We've had projects with you know much more buttons, land in, you know, land in the water impacts and larger weapon replications uh, than this project, and we've, I think we've done it pretty well. So We're very responsive to you any questions. Who is responsible, like after a heavy rain, like let's say Sunday, Sunday night maybe or something, who's going to go out and do they have a requirement to be out there within I don't know, 12 hours or something like that? And what what happens? Yeah, that's automatically for deputy sweat. Okay. It happens automatically. And it, again, it can go in tandem or with multiple people if there's water replication under construction, if there's stormwater uh, EMPs under construction, other things under construction could have, you know, multiple people on the ground doing these inspections for a project like this. And then, how do we get a report so that we know that someone has gone out and checked to see that 
the erosion control is still good and that the uh, partially completed wetland uh, rep uh, replication project isn't washed away and stuff like that. It sounds like there are several different people doing this and where does the reporting come in that like normally we get a report once a week on erosion and sediment control and that sort of stuff. So do you have something, a mechanism like that to be able to provide, usually just by email and a few pictures sort of representative of the site of um, what's going on and it's usually once a week um, or um, if you after a, I think it's a storm over an inch, something like that, um, to have that provided. Now I know this is a huge project and it's a long stretch, but obviously some parts aren't really going to be impacted um, and with wetlands. So it's those target areas that we'd be um, concerned about. And how, how would that work? I mean, the people that go out and, and check what's under their jurisdiction to check, how does something get back to the commission? We do it all the time by email. Okay. We do it on a regular basis. We do it, you know, hundreds of times a year. Uh huh. Uh, but is there a weekly thing? Weekly and even more if you bring us. It can be more for more than one time a week. Okay. Yeah. Because your, your SWIP yeah. will require a, a weekly. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 If there's multiple rain events. Yeah. Doesn't it also yeah. kick in like it's all quarter Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If, yeah. if there's problems found, there's follow up reports. You can get multiple reports in a week, and you can, you can get more than four reports in a month. Uh -huh. yes. okay. it's if I may make a suggestion, it would be, I mean, it's basically their, their NIPTI's reporting, uh, you know, there's going to be a form and a, a format. I would just suggest that maybe as an additional special condition, you get copied on the NIPTI's reports. Yeah, I mean, that's that's, they're, they're doing them anyway, so it's, okay. it's one more person email, and, and I know for a fact that MassDOT does that in other places. So. Okay. All right, and then, um, so are these people that are going to be doing the work, are they permanent DOT employees or some of those contractors or, or what? It can be a mixture of both. They have to, they have to be certified in the do reports. That's what we are certified, uh, certified how? I mean, is there, I know there's several different kinds of certification for erosion and sediment control um, work. Is that sort of? trained through the EPA trainings oh, okay. at a minimum. And okay. also we have, we have different requirements, especially if it's uh, someone who's going to be doing those reports and being, like, say, environmental monitor or monitor for public notification areas, so there's multiple yeah. layers of it. But at a minimum, the person filling out the sweats weekly or by rain event is going to have the EPA training. Okay. Okay. So I may ask you just for some sort of language or something about that. Absolutely. Okay. Um, all right, and so the compliance monitor part, you said there's several different kinds, so there isn't like a one particular piece of, of the, the contract information that you sent that covers that. It's sort of in different sections? It, it is in different sections, yes. Okay. But it would be part of the special condition. To follow yeah. that contract, okay. Okay, thank you. And um, let's see if there's anything. Oh, is there anything else from that that you wanted to talk nothing, about? This? Nothing. Nothing of particular um, uh, that requires particular attention. I think the, the remainder, like I say, uh, are are pretty general. Yeah. Uh, covering good construction have. practices. Uh, yeah. So you could probably. Um, include them or not, quite frankly. I think, uh, I think we would. The typical stuff about, you know, the cement trucks and yeah. the stockpiling and stuff and, and stabilizing the site if it's more than, is it 30 days or something like yeah, that? Yeah, if it's inactive for more than 30 days, spill prevention. Yeah. You know, there's a, a bulleted list of uh, measures for s preventing spills okay. and so forth. Um, and like Matt said, you know, these come from other DOT jobs and we're certainly comfortable with them as well. So if you feel that you know, it helps the commission and yeah. can include them in specials. What sort of dewatering do you, your, your, your uh, contractors normally do? Is it very depending on the site? I'm just wondering, you know, I don't just want like a, a big hose pumping directly 
yeah. into an area that's going to scour out. And I assume you wouldn't do that. So no, it's, it definitely varies depending on the site that typically falls under contractor means and methods. But there are you know, certain minimum requirements that you, know, you can't just fire hose out the end of the street yeah. or something like that. But do you ever actually do filter bags and stuff like that? I've worked on projects. Yeah, I work yeah. filter bags. Okay, that sort of stuff. Okay. So, so in in this proposed uh, that's in your your letter, yeah. Um, there's a bulleted list for dewatering, um, including notice to the commission within yeah. mm -hmm. 24 hours, um, no discharge of untreated dewatered stormwater or groundwater to jurisdictional areas, either directly or indirectly. Um, any discharge to surface water or drainage structure shall be visibly free of sediment, um, and uh, to the maximum extent possible, practical yeah. uh, dewatering activities should be located outside the 100 foot buffer. So, you know, and again, those are just kind of standard good practices for different dewatering. And the only other thing I'd say is that um, with the wetland replication, um, we usually require that after the, uh, the replication has been completed, that we get an initial report that it's done when it was done, the plants that were put in, a couple of photos, something like that. Again, all this can be by email, and then one um, a year somewhere before the end of the growing season, I guess, so you get the maximum um, vegetative growth to see if you're meeting that 75% um, overall. Yeah, and actually in the special provision, there's an area where we can update the reporting requirements based on what, you know, the okay. or the commission wants to see. So whatever's included in the special will be, you know. Okay. All right. And again, that, that document they provided, the 755.45, I think lots of specification for okay. all that. It is quite, quite extensive. Okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to go through all that. Yeah. <laughs> all right, um, I, I guess I would say that I'm grateful that we have the peer reviewers. And I don't even know how they finished getting through all this stuff on such short notice. The, the 50 megabyte document for the 452 pages, the plans that were just um, got to us the other day, and then the peer reviewers were able to get to stuff to us today. It's really pushing the envelope in terms of a volunteer part-time staff and volunteer commission. And I would hope that next time that you give us a little more time so we can work on this and a little less crunch. Um, we really that. appreciate all, all the time. And yeah, we very grateful to BSC, very grateful to staff. And you know, I know the documents are huge, but I think you know we turned them around in less than 10 days and only provided what was requested. So trimmed as much fat as we could. Yeah. Um, but it is, you know, it's a lot of information. <laughs> Yeah, especially like <coughs> two days. <laughs> well, well, we're doing our best to do c good customer service. <laughs> you heard something like that in the newspaper. Yes. <laughs> and then, just for your, I wrote down the revision to the post oh, good. special for stormwater. Okay. Just like we talked about, you know, if you request it, we'll provide the access. It'll have all that information, okay. and you can then, you know, get into it whenever. So I'll just Thank I'll you. I'll maybe just uh, mention it to the DPW director so yeah. he's comfortable with that. But I'm assuming that he would be. Yeah, if he has any questions, you can reach out to us directly. Yeah. Okay. Be happy to talk to him. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions about the project? No. I'm here in Massachusetts State. We have enough information to uh, issue order conditions between these peer review guidance and your other notes. Um, I hope so. Yes, I mean I, I think so. Like I said, I just, there's no way I've been able to get to it, so I am totally dependent on the the peer reviewers, and I'm very grateful that you guys were able to turn stuff around and talk for us and provide a bunch of special condition examples. So we appreciate that too. Um, and I guess, I don't know. I mean. So I'm going to entertain a motion to, uh, to make a motion to close the hearing and issue order conditions based upon 
the order conditions, uh, special, special, conditions. Conditions, special conditions that have been presented to us by our peer review group, as well as any other extra pieces that Janice would like to add. And we discussed, yeah. And we discussed yeah. here tonight. And plus the standard, uh, the standard conditions that are always in a, an agreement such as this, okay. correct? Yes. I think that's what a lot of those are. That I know, but let's yeah. have to get it out in the open and yeah. say it. So, um, I, I'd like to I'd make that motion. Okay, Mr. Chair, if I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I think it would be easier to, to break those motions up, one to close the hearing, and then the next one to approve. Okay, I'll do that. Sorry about that. Okay, so, okay. I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So move. We have a second. Oh, Gordon can. Okay. Nope. He seconded. Okay. Hmm? Or can. He seconded. Okay. So Gordon. Okay. Let me just so I get this straight. Can Can Gordon vote or not? Can you just <laughs> clarify that? <for> us? <laughs> well, I, I find it interesting. DOT takes the position that he's qualified to make the quorum, but he's not qualified to vote. I, I you know, I, 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 I give you my opinion as to what goes on here so um, you know if he votes and that later is determined that he can't then we'll have to go then his won't count and there'll be three so I think he could vote right now under their interpretation of what they have unless you have an issue with it. we don't think that he can vote okay. but he establishes the quorum by being president he's the quorum at the meeting but he did not attend all the hearings yeah right. so I, it's a six rings it's I'm old enough to fight and die but I can't vote <laughs> <laughs> It's better off we just don't have you vote. Go sit somewhere else. No, you don't have to be here. You have to count as the four. <laughs> okay, thanks. This is confusing back and forth, so appreciate it. Okay, so. Get any better okay. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, okay. And Gordon's not voting, correct? So having that be done, I'm going to entertain a motion to issue order conditions. And special conditions. And special conditions based upon our peer review group for stormwater management and the notice of intent. With additional comments that we discussed at the meeting tonight with Janice and the other people in the audience. Uh, we have a motion. So move. Okay. <laughs> Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes three. Okay. Okay. Um, maybe we can do No, this. you guys got your job. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of work. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, Tom Hadley is like a fishbowl. Everybody's going to look at home here. So I hope you heard somewhere of that. I know more about what I do at my farm from my neighbors than I know. So I was pretty fortunate. Okay, so that was 730. Yeah. Okay. All right. Do we have any other business? Yes, some bits and pieces. And I forgot to give you guys the March 9th minutes. Didn't think about it. Take that up at the next meeting, then. Yeah. And um, I guess we could just say that just sometime this afternoon, and I have not had a chance to look at it because I just got into the office and had to come back out. Um, we did get the requested um, complaints that have been um, sent to the selectmen about the Conservation Commission. So I will get that stuff out to each of you so you can see them. I think there were what, maybe a dozen or somewhere around there? Uh, there were not dozens and dozens. Okay. Yes, there were not dozens yeah, they were not dozens and dozens. And, um, yeah, and they were all basically from people with uh, the camper dock issues. Yeah. Why don't they? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we also have, um, I think it's five candidates for um, the uh, uh, the two places on the Conservation Commission. I don't know if I'm allowed to give the names or not, so I'm not going to um, publicly do it. We've got that as well. So I guess. Sorry. 
What is going to happen now? What is the um, board? Yeah, the board is. Do we need to get an interview with people, or according to what the board of selectmen said? I'm not sure. Interview. Well, I think you'll get some to say. To ask for our opinion. Mm -hmm. And there's two, obviously two openings. Right. Right now. Right. <laughs> right now. And it's going to be a six-person board, not a seven-person, not an odd number. Right. That's the way it currently stands, unless the select board reverses their decision. Right. Right. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Very well. Appreciate it. Okay, um, I don't have any bills in the correspondence, and there's another thing that came in, so otherwise. Um, oh, just, I, I did talk to Carolyn and to the HR director about um, the president, yeah. and at this point, um, they also, um, um, Bill Dwyer was on with it also, and we just, um, at this point, we're looking at maybe doing a land use clerk to get We're back on Thursday or what? Thank you. Just two seconds. Yes. Uh, it's from all the Thank you. Better late than never. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll be in touch. Do you want the, the not full set or do you just want the full size? Because um, you're welcome to have them on your stone. So what is this now? These this are just, just the ones the that have changes. Change. Just the color of the eyes. The same ones are in there. It's just easy to flip through this. Yeah, okay. Why don't you take back one of those? I'll take this and one of those. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So they're looking at maybe a land use clerk, which is what Sheets Square does, where there's a part time person who does minutes and attends the meetings and uh, answers the phone and sends people applications and stuff like that. It's still going to take some training. Mm -hmm. And. Um, there are a number of towns right now that are looking for a conservation agent. So right in our area, there's at least five or six. So I've been looking at some of them. Um, at, at any rate, so it will be competitive, and I don't know yet what they're, how many hours they're gonna ask for, but they figured it'd be a better opportunity for somebody if there are hours for the planning board, ZBA, and CONCOM. And that the person will just do the work for each of those, and they'll figure out. Be overwhelmed. Yes, it's only part time. They were talking about maybe, maybe twenty hours a week. She's going to do it for everyone. I don't think it don't can think be it done for twenty hours a week. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, but that's at least. But what surprised me? I don't know. I guess you're going to have to do that. <laughs> no. Anyway, so they're at least talking about it and looking at it. But um, also, I was surprised. I don't know if any of you were on the um, select board meeting last night, but they, no. Carolyn mentioned that it may be, I think she said, a couple months before they thought that something would be someone. So, what do we do in the meantime? Yeah, that's a, a, you're going to need to talk to them. We're going to need. I'm, Is it going to be the Wild West or two months? Yeah, I'm at, I'm off on vacation, I don't know. <laughs> I just came back, I don't mind this. I was back from Zucchini today and I was thinking about what to do. Personally, my, my opinion right now is let's just stop having a con -com in this town. Board of Selectmen made their bed, let them sleep in it. And we're, our hands are tied. I get rich doing this, don't I? Yeah. Steve gets rich. You get rich. Yeah. You all get rich doing this. <laughs> right. So I don't know. I don't know. If we gotta wait months, it's gonna be like the Wild West. That's what it's gonna be. So of course you can at least get by without two more what number yeah. but we can't get a buy with with Well Janice is still here, so I got a question to propose to you. So if people come in with applications. Don't we have so many days to act upon it? Yes, a request for determination generally is supposed to be um, a meeting is supposed to be held within 21 days. If you only meet once a month, we haven't had any problem with people understanding. We only meet once a month. Mm -hmm. You're on our next agenda, and so it may actually be you know 28 days or something. But we haven't had that, and and I try to get them. I look over their forms to make sure that they have everything they need for us. DEP tells me if there's anything they so, don't like. So someone comes in. This application, who are they going to be giving this to after you leave? Who's going to answer the phone? Go ahead. And who's going to do the 
the legal notice? And who's going to schedule the meeting? I don't know. I'm and guessing that. What happens if you don't have a meeting? Does it now fall into the lab of the DEP to take? Yes. 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 If you don't, if there's no action um, within the 21 days on a request for determination, people can officially then appeal to the DEP to issue a determination instead. Under the Water Protection Act. Yes. However, you get a bylaw. Yeah, under the bylaw, there's nothing. Yeah. Do you have a bylaw that says you have to make a determination in 21 days? I don't think it gets specific on that. So. No, I don't think we get that's that's just as well. So, so, so this is like a request for determination and those of intent. What if they want a certificate of compliance? Any of that. Well, they, no, you don't, there's no time on the certificates of compliances. And uh, notice of intent, you're supposed to hold a hearing within 21 days of receiving a file number from DEP, which is generally about a week or so after it's been submitted. But if we don't have support, how can we have a meeting? Right. Uh, I'm guessing that someone in town hall will be assigned to at least help you with the basics of putting together an agenda and and setting up a meeting. <laughs> but I don't know. And then they get to fill out the forms. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so people who complained and thought that we weren't helping them, you know, the complaints is that we didn't, we no. didn't help them fill out the forms and all, if they have to come back now, they'll find out what it's really like. That's right. And uh, for a number of years, I was chairman of the CPA, and I would go to town hall once a week. And nine times out of ten, that when I went to town hall, someone was in your office and you were helping them nice. fill out the forms. You were helping them fill out the forms. And this comment of there's so many complaints because nobody was there to help fill out the forms is poppycock, well, personally. They're not written complaints. No. And you know what? The way that yeah, I look at it is, does the planning board <laughs> sit there and help somebody fill out a form? Yeah, really. Does the zone of appeals that. help does fill the, out a form? The five complaints, I won't say name, but the right. five complaints have to do with three campsites north of the bridge. Yeah. And three of the complaints are for one campsite concerning placement of the campers. Yeah. And that's it. Nothing else. Two are non voters. Right. And not even resident of the no. town. As had. opposed to twenty nine saying, put this committee back together. So I haven't seen Thank there, 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 there seen weren't dozens, there were five support. Yeah. There were five complaints. Yeah. And and you think there were maybe twenty nine support I have list, yeah. In all in all five of those comprise of three applications that we issued order conditions. We we, we issued a judgment. Yeah. We went through the process. But they didn't like the results. Well actually I should say one of them didn't like the results. The other two were, were fine. There's they two, two there's two people that complained it, it, they they got their application. The other other three people are with one parcel yeah. that are, are appealing. Our decision to be picked. Yeah, well. That's it. And I've been on the board 36 plus years. Wow. And it's the first time we've ever had any complaints like that. Wow. Yeah. Well, and you know, if there were complaints, it was not handled correctly. If something's going wrong somewhere and the select board is supposed to be overseeing it, then we should say we're hearing that people are unhappy. Yeah. And could you meet? Let's have a little face to face and see what's it's just, going on. It's just like if you're not, you file a complaint because you're not happy about where it's going to get your building permit or get your permit from the planning board. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, you remember I had a problem with the planning board. Nobody was holding my hand. And all these complaints right. are about a specific period of time, just recently, having to do with campers. Oh and yeah, within the last two months. Yeah. Yeah. There's something. So else. there's and I, something else going on. It's. There is something else going on. There definitely is something else going on. And I mean, well, I could write a rebuttal on some of it. I don't know if anyone really cares enough, but some of it is sort of distorted Childish. information, I yeah. guess, one-sided information. It's I I've read, I've read some. And I would like to go on record as saying, without the knowledge that Janice Stone has, this committee would not exist. She's encyclopedic in her knowledge of the wetlands, and. It's it's been an honor and a pleasure serving with you. Okay, Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. He has done a valuable service to our town. And I will send that Janice. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I, know. I know. Thank I understand. you. You have three S's. Well, you know how I feel. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> well.
None of us here on the board want to do the work that Jazz has been doing. <laughs> well, and I think you need to make that clear. And you could probably put it in writing and sign it so it's documented and not just hearsay. Mm -hmm. That the board is very concerned about what is going to happen in the future because you are, your time schedule does not permit, your base knowledge does not include, you're willing. But you always had support. Yeah, it's somebody standing behind us holding us up. Yeah. Yeah. That was incredibly important. That in, uh, Please write letters and sign them. And sign Continue them. to write letters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So you're going to. Can I entertain a motion to adjourn? So move. All right. Okay. okay. Second. Motion made second. All in favor. Okay. All in favor. All right.